But here's a story that emerged from the New York Times that is so unbelievable. You, you can't even comprehend its words, but let me share them with you. Turns out President Obama met with Ferguson protesters and protest leaders the day after the midterm election. The president is concerned that the protesters and said to the protesters he wants them to stay on course. Now, you understand what's happened in Ferguson, right, so far? Businesses have been looted, torched, cars upended. These have not been exactly peaceful protests. This meeting was not on the president's daily schedule, apparently. The story in the New York Times was kind of buried in the 21st paragraph of their report. Here's what the the paragraph says in the New York Times. Times. Leaders here say that it is the nature of a movement that has taken place in part on social media and that does not match an earlier era protest structure where a single outspoken leader might have led the way. Ashley Yates, a leader of Millennial Activists United, said, this is not your mama's civil rights movement. This is a movement where you have several different voices, different people. The person in charge is really the people. But the message from everyone is the same. Stop killing us. Some of these leaders met with President Obama. According to Reverend Al Sharpton, who has appeared frequently in St. Louis with the Brown family and delivered a speech at Michael Brown's funeral, Mr. Obama was, quote, concerned about Ferguson staying on course in terms of pursuing what it was that he knew we were advocating. He said he hopes that we're doing all we can to keep peace. Obama wants protesters to stay the course? What's the course? Burning shops? Looting? Attacking people, perhaps? What do you think President Obama's theory is in asking protesters to, in Ferguson, Missouri, to stay on course? Should there be protests that emerge as a result of a, of a non-indictment, a, 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 a failure to indict Officer Darren Wilson?